हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू स्किल्स विल ट्रेनिंग यूट्यूब चैनल माई सेल्फ मोहम्मद जुबैर एंड दिस चैनल इज ऑल अबाउट शोइंग यू हाउ टू बिकम ए हाईली पेड आई टी प्रो रेली फैस्ट सो द टॉपिक ऑफ टूडे इज वीडियो इज फिट और थर्टी फाइव फर्स्ट थॉट एंड रिव्यू सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर डू लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड should you switch to fedora 35 yes maybe not stick until the end to find out fedora 35 was released on 2nd of november 2021 and it requires a minimum of 20 gigabytes of disk space and 2 gigabytes of ram to install and run smoothly a double of those amounts is recommended for a better experience the biggest highlight of fedora 35 is that It now ships with the latest Gnome version which is Gnome 41. Previously, Ubuntu had the latest, most stable and the perfect Gnome desktop environment, but now Fedora has the lead. Let's see what we have new in Gnome 41. You might be surprised to know that we only have two significant updates in Gnome 41 that are worth mentioning. The first one is power profiling. and the second one is multitasking so let's talk about the power profiling first so from here click on any one of these option and here we have different options this one says power saver if you click on it here we have three more options related to power profiling these options were not available in previous versions of fedora but now with gnome 41 these options have been added You can select any power profile from here and you are good to go. If you just click on this power settings, it will take you to the power settings option in the settings of your Fedora Linux distribution. So that was the first significant change that we have in Gnome 41 and now let's talk about the second change we have in Gnome. Right click on your desktop, from here go to your settings. Here we have a new option named multitasking. This option was not there in earlier version of Gnome. So just click on it and these are different features that come with it. The first one here is the hot corner. This option will allow you to open and see the activities overview when you take your cursor to the left corner of your screen. But as I am using Fedora 35 in virtual box that is why this option will not work on my system. The second one is active screen edges. With this option you can adjust your open applications automatically. If I drag this application in the top left corner and here you can see it has adjusted this application accordingly onto my screen. So this is how active screen edges work. Then we have workspaces. We have two options. First one is dynamic workspaces. then we have fixed number of workspaces let me show you what it is and how it works when i press my super key you can see we have small windows at the top these are workspaces at the moment you can have as many as you want for example i have my settings open in this workspace and i have my terminal in this workspace let's say i want to have one more workspace for that I will just click on the last one and here we have a brand new workspace. I can open anything in this one. Let's say I want to open file manager in here. So I will just click on it. So here I have files in my third workspace. Again, I will press my super key and here we have fourth workspace available. So with dynamic workspaces, you can have as many workspaces as you want. Let's get back to our multitasking. In case if I go with fixed number of workspaces what it will do it will only allow you to have these number of workspaces at the moment the default value is 4 so you will not have any workspace more than 4 if you want to increase or decrease it you can do so by using these two buttons after that we have multi monitor and then we have application switching and here we also have two options First one says include applications from all workspaces. It will allow you to shift through between all the applications no matter where and in which workspace they are opened. I'll show you how it works. Here you can see 
I have option to go between these three applications. I'll go to my terminal and if I press my super key, here you can see I have these three applications open in three different workspaces. So that is the benefit of going with this option that says include application from all workspaces. Second option is include application from the current workspace only. This option will only allow you to shift through applications which will be opened in this particular workspace only. Apart from these two, we do not have any significant update worth mentioning in Genome 41. As you are a Linux user, you might have an idea that we can install the Genome tweaks to customize our desktop environment. But with Genome 41, we will be able to do a little bit more with our desktop environment in terms of its usability and customizability. But still, Genome tweaks offer you a lot more than Genome 41. But users who do not like to add extra extensions to their systems, Genome 41 is perfect for them. Now let's talk about the things that got updated in Fedora 35. Fedora has switched their default audio system to Pipewire. And now they have improved this by adding the new Wire Plumber Session Manager. It does not matter which version of Fedora you are using, you will get the latest version of all the open source software available out there. For example, now you get the Python version 3.10 and BTRF version 5.14 and same goes for other programming languages and libraries like PHP and Perl. So these were some of the updates related to the programming languages and libraries and now I will show you those versions. So I'll go to my terminal. Here I'll just write Python 3 space dash dash version and I will hit enter. So here we have the version of Python as 3.10. Now I will check the version of BTRFS. So for that I will just replace Python 3 with BTRFS. The rest of the command is same. Hit enter and here we have BTRFS version 5.15. So that was all about the updates related to the programming languages and libraries and now let's see the default applications in our Fedora 35. Just press your super key or click on this button that says activities. Here we have a button that says show application. So just click on it. So these are some of the applications that are available by default. Here we have Mozilla Firefox as a default web browser. And then for documentations and presentations, we have LibreOffice. And then we have some utilities by default in here. After that, we have weather, we have clock, maps, photos. And for media files, we have a rhythm box by default in our Fedora 35. Here we have a rhythm box. You can use it or you can also download the VLC media player in case if you want to go with that one. The good news is we can download many applications in Fedora from the terminal and the software center as well. And we can also enable other repositories in Fedora which will allow us to download more software and packages. I'll show you that as well. So in order to open software store, I will just click on this. Here we have a lot of applications that we can download into our system. Here we have some categories that we can go in and download a particular application. For example, if you want to download a game, go to this category and you can download any game. In case, if you want to download and play some heavier and some advanced game, you can download the Steam into your Fedora. And that's a good news. Because Steam will allow you to play some more heavier games. So that was all about the softwares. And now I will show you that how you can enable other repositories. In order to enable other software repositories, just click on this option button. Here it says software repositories. So these are different repositories that are available and you can enable them into your Fedora 35. And obviously after enabling them, you will be able to download and install more number of software and more number of packages. And it will help you to have better experience from Fedora 35. So that was all about the software repositories and software center. We have a tool that we can access from the terminal called NeoFetch. So I will open it. I will just write here NeoFetch and after that hit enter. Here you can see 
we have all the information from our system. Well, this tool is not pre-installed into Fedora 35, so you have to install it. So here we have the official logo of Fedora. Then we have operating system, which is obviously Fedora Linux 35. Then we have host name, kernel, uptime. We have total number of these packages available from RPM. For shell, we have bash version of 5.1. Then we have themes, CPU, GPU, and other information about this system. And now I'll move ahead and I will explore the system in terms of the resource usages. So for that, I will open another utility and it's named as top. So I will just write a simple command here and the command is top, hit enter. So here you can see we have different processes running at the moment in our system. And then we have the users of those processes and we have two users at the moment. And then we have the percentage of processes that are being used by each process. At the upper portion, we have the summary of the system resources. Our system is using almost 1280 megabytes of RAM. And at the moment, I have only opened Terminal and File Explorer into my system. So that shows that Fedora is a bit heavier in terms of resource usages. So make sure that you have enough resources if you want to use Fedora 35. And it also ensures one thing that if you want to use Fedora on the older laptops with low number of resources, then this might not be a good idea. In the end, let's have a look at the file explorer in the Fedora 35. So here we have same names and same icons for different repositories, just like those in Fedora 34 or Fedora 33. From here, you can have the list view of your folders. At the moment, we are having grid view. After clicking on it, here you can see we have list view and from here you have different more options. For example, you can create a new folder, you can edit it, you can select everything and you have many other things. So that was all about the file explorer. I will just close this one and that's it for the review. And now to conclude and give my thoughts about this version of Fedora, I would say it is more user friendly and stable version of Fedora and it is worth using. Yes, you might not get any significant changes from the Fedora 34, but still it is worth it. Other than that, you will get the Genome 41 with Fedora 35. And obviously you will get to use the latest version of open source software in it. If you have never used Fedora before, now might be the good time to switch to it and enjoy this stable and beautiful Linux distribution. Before I end this video, there is a potential issue that some of the Fedora 35 users are facing. And that is when you plug in external monitor with your laptop with Fedora 35, on the boot up time, the display doesn't show up. This is a problem with the NVIDIA driver. Not every Fedora 35 user is facing this problem, but yes, problem is still out there. So we hope that this problem will get solved as soon as possible. And we are done with today's video. Please leave a like, subscribe and press the bell icon. We will see you in the next video.